again. There we go. <laughs> All right, this is the essence of plain air painting. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hey, my name's Dan. This is Daily Art Adventure number 976. Plain air painting in your ochre coke. Let me go ahead and show you really quick, really quickly for you English majors. Uh, there's the view. Let me see if I'm aiming the right direction. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, hang on just a second. More like some of that right there. Get it? So once again, I am in or on. I never know which whether to call it in or on. I think the conventional language is when you're on an island, you use the word on. But if you're in a town on the island, you're in anyway. And both the island and the town are both called Ocracoke. So I'm going to say I am on Ocracoke. No, I'm in the town. I'm in Ocracoke. <laughs> See, I don't know which I don't know which to call it. There you go. Proof. Uh, blue sky. Therefore, uh, warm, warm stuff under the sky, right? Big, bold, bodacious, big, bold, bodacious marks. And then down here in the foreground, not the foreground, but in the subject matter and the foreground, it's warm, warm light, warm sunlight, nice mid late afternoon sunlight in the in the foreground which means it's going to be warm colors down here so that means i do the the abstraction in cool colors get it so the only relationship that my abstract painting has to the and i wish right here i wish i had some watercolor crayons but i don't so i just have to the only relationship that this these abstract marks have to the finished painting is that they are opposite antiphonal to use a musical term contrapunctal <laughs> to use a more ant musical term they are contrary to so that's what you heard the sky is going to be bluish cool therefore the um most of my marks up here in the sky are warm opposite of blue and down here the, the light on the subject matter is going to be mostly warm so my marks are mostly cool get it opposite antiphonal contrapunctal <laughs> look it up <laughs> Probably Latin, I imagine. Probably both of those. Antiphonal, it sounds like it means against the sound, right? Phonal, against, and that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much what it means. And the, the rationale behind the, the white mark, the white paint, is it, it these marks that I'm doing in white really won't won't show up as color in the finished painting but I've discovered that of of all the abstract marks that I make I'm just about done here of all the abstract marks that I make the white these white ones end up showing up the most in the end not as color but as texture And again, just in case there's anybody new watching me. Hello, Benji. Ha <laughs> ha, good. Glad you caught me, man. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, that's so funny, you guys. Um, three, four, five years ago, especially 10 years ago, I mean, I think 90, 95% of my painting was on plain air. I mean, I was I was a, I was a plain air painter. That was just that was a very accurate label. And I am a plain air painter. I am have have easel will travel. <laughs> that was that was my shtick for many years, twelve years. Man, nothing but plain air. And boy, it's changed a lot in the last couple of years. All right, let me show you again. And I'm not going to zoom this time, but. 
you see that white boat and that white truck, all that, everything down there um, is what I'm painting. The boat, the truck, the house, the trees. It's, it's all kind of nice. So let me commence with first layer of drawing. Yeah, definitely red, red orange, definitely. Why? Because um, because the uh, subject matter is mostly is white, which means cool. It's got warm light on it, but but the the object itself feels the two objects or three objects, which are. Um, which are a boat. I sounded like a Canadian for a second there, didn't I? A boat. A boat. A, a white pickup, of which I'm just going to get the back half. I don't, I don't care about getting the whole pickup. That's, that's, the, the, the pickup is just a, sort of like a, a setup, a prop. And then the, the sort of white house. Um, so I'm going to move it over a little bit. I'm going to cheat. Move the house over just a little bit. Let me look, let me look at that before I go any further. Let me see if I like that that placement. And there's there's a bunch of stuff on the boat. Um, the answer is no. I don't like that placement. So I wipe that off and start over. Right. <laughs> No, I'm going to draw it again, but I'm going to, uh, it's, it's too big to me. I want it, I want it a little more the way it looks to me right now, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit more discreet. So it's not so much in your face. So boat smaller. And so I'm using a slightly darker color. You see, I'm using purple and red instead of orange and red so that the, uh, so that the dark, purple sort of blocks out the lighter color, if you will. Now, let me see. Yeah. See, so everything's quite a bit. The boat, instead of being here, is now here. Truck, instead of here, is now here. House. Now, these other extra, as you can see easily now, these extra extraneous wrong lines, so to speak. This red line was part of the part of the boat. This part of the boat doesn't matter at all. Now, does it? Just adds to the cacophony, if you will, of the of the underpainting. Doesn't doesn't have to uh, mean anything at all. In fact, it would be a mistake to erase it, quote unquote, because because you'd be losing valuable valuable chaos. <laughs> That's that's a good word. This, these are trees here, by the way. And one, I'm here with uh, six other artists this week, painting in ochre coke. Um, I think it's okay as long as the ocean's right there. And one of the things I've been saying to to the other artists, and we've been agreeing on, is that that I actually can't see the ocean over there but I almost can. If I knock down a little bit of bushy shrubbery here, I could see the water line. So I'm going to knock down the bushes, include the water line, which then uh, gives the, the painting that seaside, that oceanside panache look, feel, which I want. Hey, I, do, I am going to pick you up one more time and see if you could, I guess I'm going to have to zoom you this time. All right, because I want you to see something. Um, I'll zoom as much as I can. There we go. So you see the house back there. Do you see the the sunlit side of the house? This side over here, right? This side over here. See how it has that diagonal shadow? Can you see that far away? So in this case, I don't even need to make it up. Uh, but uh, some of you, if you've heard me, you take the oath. Yeah, you can barely see it. Sorry about that, but. Um, the oath is, I do solemnly swear, are you taking it? I do solemnly swear that I will never again um, paint a flat plane 
without putting a diagonal shadow. Usually, usually it's a shadow across it. All right. Speaking of which, let's let's talk about planar painting just a little bit, shall we? Um, this is one of those days today, October thirteenth, twenty twenty, when uh, the sky is the, the, sky, the sky the the sun is moving from west to east, from east to west. No, today the sun is moving from from. Uh, from east to west, all day long, all day long. Sun's going to be moving. Sun's going to be moving all day long. It's not going to stop all day long. You get get, get the message? <laughs> Need me to say it one more time? Okay, all day long, sun's going to be moving, right? And um, when you're out here, as I'm going to be out here for a couple hours painting, the sun's going to move a whole lot. Um, in my in my scene, the scene in front of me. Okay, so the number one mistake. If you're when you're a beginner plein air painter, the number one mistake is you chase what I call you chase the sun. That is, as it moves across the sky, your painting changes. You know, you start out with the sun here, and then little by little by little, bit, so on. And that that's of course a disaster. That's what a beginner does, and therefore you guys are not going to do that because you're listening to my videos. So you'll, you won't be beginners, and you'll never do that. So when you show up to do a plein air painting, you you decide. As soon as you get there, that is not an exaggeration. As soon as you get there, you decide um, what lighting you're going to to use to put on your painting. You either decide, "Ooh, I like the way it looks right now," in which case, hopefully you have a camera with you, as I do. In which case, you take a picture, snappity snappity shoot shoot shoot. You take the picture right then, but get to get to get a whole bunch of pictures maybe with HDR by the way, on your phone. If, it's, if you're taking use a phone, well, hopefully you're using a phone because if you use a traditional camera, you can't, what are you going to do? Take the film out of the camera? Yuck, yuck, that's a joke. Shows you how old I am. Um, we used to have young people don't even know what film is, probably. <laughs> I jest. I know you know what film is. But anyway, so I use phones, of course, because they have a, a nice big screen. So that's exactly what I did. And in fact, today, for this particular uh, this particular scene, come on, come on, come on, there we go. Um, that is exactly what I have done. I got here 20 minutes ago, and the first thing I did is looked, stroked my chin, thought for several minutes, and said, bingo, that's the light I want right there. That doesn't happen very often, by the way. Not very often do I show up at a place and decide, eat gads, that's it. <laughs> uh, so either you 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 um, you're going to paint what it looks like right now, in which case you take pictures, or you you think you know I think in an hour or two hours or three hours, whatever the case may be, I think in one two or three hours the lighting's going to be better, and in in that case then you still take a picture, but you start painting, you start imagining, you're trying to pretend, you try to imagine what the light's going to be like when the sun goes that direction from us uh, an hour from now, all right. And then you paint, and then if you're there for a whole hour, say, like I am, not everybody paints as long as I do on plein air. A lot of people paint real fast, but I don't. I'm a slow plein air painter. In fact, it, it, it could be questioned whether I'm actually a plein air painter. I'm actually, I do studio paintings on plein air. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, be that as it may, um, I'm out here for a couple hours, and then at which time, I discover if my guesses were close or far. <laughs> that makes sense. So experience really helps um, in, in guesstimating what the light's going to do over the next two hours. But in today, it's, it's the easiest way to paint is to pick the light. Okay, the third option is, of course, is neither the light that is that, that's there when you get there, nor the light as you imagine it's going to be in however many hours you're going to be out there painting, two, three hours, whatever it is even four hours, whatever. It might be completely invented sunlight. And that is, I do that way more than, that is the least, uh, that's the most unfun <laughs> because you never get to find out. You're not, you know, in other words, you might say, oh man, the light was, would have been perfect this morning. In which case, probably you plan to come out here, in, you know, tomorrow morning, but you don't always have that option, of course. Um, I, the summary is, let me let me summarize all that craziness I just said. The summary is you decide 
as soon as you get to a plain air location, you decide immediately. You make that light decision, okay? And then operate accordingly. And today was the, as I said, the, the easiest of all scenarios, which is, ooh, looks perfect right now. By far the easiest, it doesn't usually happen that way, honestly. Especially for me, it seems I rarely, but lucky today. I am going to try, this would be a really good exercise for me. I'm going to try to make this a really fast plein air painting, which that is certainly not my forte by any means. Fast plein air painting, because my technique has just you know evolved over the years, so I have more and more and more phases, more layers to go through. So clearly that means I'm not going to do all my normal phases. So anyway, just see, let's see what I can do. But it's, of course, it's more important to do a good painting than it is to a fast painting, so we'll see. But I would like to see what I can do in two hours. There are many fantastic plein air painters that do their whole painting in 25 minutes. <laughs> I, I suppose I could try to fake it and be one of those kind of people and just act like somebody else. Maybe, maybe I should, but anyway, not today. That's not what I'm going to do today. Um, another, so there's going to be a diagonal shadow across this building. Another really good rule of thumb. Hello, Wizrad Benji. Yep, thanks. Hey, Yusuf. Oh my goodness, Indonesia. Hello, Dennis. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, hello, Susan. Good to be painting today. All right, I was going to say um, this house um, has pale buff, pale tan, gray tan, cedar, fake cedar shake siding. Nice house. Uh, but the sun is on this side, shadow this side. That gives me a real good excuse for talking about one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> Let's take that with a grain of salt. I have a thousand favorite subjects. Anyway. Um, what is the light differential uh, between the shady and sunny side of a building? That is, if the sun is hitting one side of a house or a building and the other side of the building is in shade, what is the difference in light? And there is an answer to this question. I'm going to give it to you. Number one, it's more, if you're a beginner painter, if you're an early journey painter, the, the differential between the dark and light sides of a building is typically way more than you think. Does that make sense? So early journey painters left to their own devices, in other words, early journey painters will make the light and the dark side of a building much too close um, tonally values. So here's the answer. It is on a 10 degree gray scale. Okay, white at one end, black at the other. The differential is not what I've got here, by the way. This is underpainting. Ouch, mosquito. The differential is five. So if the sunny side of the house is a number two, real close to white, the, the shady side will be a seven. So way more. Most a, a beginner, forgive me, an early journey painter will typically make it a differential of three, two or three or four. And uh, there. Now you won't do that because you're listening to me. A differential of five. So if you don't, if you can't picture that, just just go to Google, type in uh, grayscale, 10, de 10 degree, most of them are 10, 10 step grayscales. And then print it out and look at the difference between a three and an eight or a two and a seven or a, a one and a six or a four and a nine. Okay. That's, that's your difference. Typically, typically. There are exceptions, but that's typical and that's certainly going to be the case on this uh, particular painting.
again, left to our own devices, till you learn that number, till you learn that trick, most people will way under, way underdo it. The sun is frightfully powerful. It's the, the visual light spectrum is so powerful. Most people don't, don't guess right when they're early in their painting journey. I mentioned a while ago, I want, I'm going to have the, just a little sliver of the ocean, the, the bay in this case, I believe, not the open ocean, but the, the harbor in, in Ocracoke. I, I, actually, I can't see it from where I'm standing, but if I were to remove a few things, that's where it would be. That's a trick. That's actually a trick I learned that I really internalized. That's a trick I learned here in Ocracoke. Um, do a painting of a house on this beautiful little island. Many of the beautiful little houses are not next to the water, right? Ah, oh, rats. So then it's the same as, in a sense, any other cute little house anywhere up out in the country, you know, uh, 200 miles from the ocean. Um, but if you'll simply sneak in, <laughs> tell a little lie, <laughs> sneak in, um, just a little sliver of the ocean back there. Most most people will buy it, so to speak. Their eye will go, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That's the, oh cool, it's the seaside, you know. Now in this case, it's so close to real, nobody would even, nobody would even, uh, in fact, I can see the, the ocean over here underneath this house. Some of you are saying, what do you mean underneath house? Oh, most of the houses on this island are on stilts, as is this one. It's, the house is built about eight feet, one story off the ground. And I can actually, actually can see the ocean right here, but I'm not going to paint it there. It would be, be confusing to the viewer, I think. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, so some of my first first layer, if you will, of tree holes, traditionally called sky holes, but they ought to be called tree holes. In this case, they are actually sky holes, but many times they are not. Anyway, so um, one one clinic, one class, one thing you must learn. How do you do? How do you do sky holes? The answer is layer by layer by layer. You don't do them all at once. You don't do sky holes one time. I will do this, these sky holes six or seven times but before the painting is done. And that was just the first one right there. Are sky holes hard edge or soft edge? The correct answer is both. But if you're an early journey painter, that is not the answer for you. If you're an early journey painter, that's my nice, nice word for beginner. If you're a beginner, no, you need to make all your hard, your uh, sky holes hard edge. Okay, I've never ever seen a beginner painter. Never ever once, not ever once, have I seen an early journey painter that made their sky holes solid enough. Now the day will come when somebody will make a liar to me. I'll run into a, a beginner who who does it, but it hasn't happened yet. So even when it does, they won't. Their exception will not outweigh the the rule, if you will. The reason is uh, because, uh, again, beginners, if you will, left to their own devices, um, won't make their sky holes a hard edge enough. And they'll just make them little puffs of fluff. Very, very annoying, very unattractive. Little fluffy smudges. And, and sky holes are not little fluffy smudges. Okay. And then after you kind of get the knack of it, after you can do it after you can do sky holes and you go oh wait a minute i get it i can make them even more realistic if i um now look at this red line right there do you see that i'm zoomed about as far as i dare go that's that was the erroneous mark so is this one up here that's that was originally the top of the pickup and this is the top of the pickup bed and i moved have since moved the pickup but look how sweet that little mark is there. It's purely abstract. Doesn't doesn't look like anything. Not supposed to look like anything. But it's just a beautiful little bit of red. And uh, I'm so glad I it's there. It makes the painting better. That little mistake, so to so to speak, actually makes the painting 
better. Uh, one of my goals, and I, I, I've said this, I say this often, said it for years, one of my goals in the, in the underpainting phase, which, right, I'm still early, early, early in the underpainting phase. Um, one of my goals is to create sufficient chaos, is to create a lot of chaos, visual chaos, a lot of visual mess, so that I will have stuff to uh, react to, respond to later in the process. All right, does that make sense? So a lot of, that's, that's why I start out with that crazy abstract, what in the world is he doing? Well, now you know, I'm creating visual interest, visual chaos. And right now I'm breaking sort of my, pro, my typical procedure. I'm doing some opaque, uh, acrylic color, which is unusual. It's partly because I'm in it. This is a, this is a definitely a, a hurry up painting for me. I definitely want to hurry up in this one. So there, that's looking kind of nice, isn't it? <laughs> Forgive me, I always feel like I have to say, after I say it like that, listen, when an artist says that, and at least certainly this, I'm not bragging, I'm rejoicing. It's like, whoa, yeah, lucky, lucky break. That turned out pretty good. Because everything we do as artists, everything, before we do it, it's a guess. After we do it, we can go, wow, that was good, or no, that wasn't so good. Oh, I would love to be in Yuko. Yogyakarta, Yogyakarta. Susan, I am in Ocracoke. Do you know where Ocracoke is? Ocracoke, North Carolina. Charming little town. Very small. I think the around population, I think, is about a thousand. Um, okay, where's my there is pencil sharp. Time out to sharpen my no. pencils. Um, Tiny little town, tiny little island uh, with long history. Going, Blackbeard the pirate. You know, one of the fun stories is he buried a treasure around here somewhere. Feel free to come and look. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit more white. I was going to do some some pencil, but no, no, no. Let's go back to white for a minute. I need to do some of this superstructure on the boat. Those are the, the you see those are the two most careful marks I've made in the whole painting so far. The four most careful marks. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I don't I don't very often use a palette knife in the uh acrylic stage but there are there are exceptions at times and this is one of those I'm going to uh, try to draw the boat pretty carefully because if anybody's going to buy this painting I would it would be more likely I think more likely to be a boat lover of some kind you know a fisherman or somebody who has connected strong connections to the beach or strong connections to ochre coke and so forth by the way we are going to have a sale a little on a porch or pop-up gallery sale there are seven of us here this year um, this is my seventh or eighth annual trip to Ocracoke. Me and my buddy Mike started this seven or eight years ago when we invite different artists. By the way, if you're an artist, I'm serious as I can be, if you're an artist and you would like to join us next year, please just let me know. Send me an email. Um, it costs about, you know, $500 to rent 
to rent the four or five hundred dollars to rent the the house, the cottage. Pretty nice cottage is not really the word. Well, sometimes we stay in things that are cottage-ish. Other times, like this year, we're staying in something that's more like a beach house. If you know the difference between those two, a little bit more swanky and clean. And, and some cottages are more rustic. Anyway, no charge for coming. It's just we have a good time. So I'm serious. If you're an artist, it's it's a pretty serious painting time. We don't we don't we don't mess around. Mike and I both play music, so we'll play music together. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much all business. Anyway, delightful time. And as I said, I think this is my our eighth year doing it. And there are seven of us here this year. And again, we're planning to have a pop-up porch sale on Friday. The local newspaper has been nice to us, gotten used to us over the years. They put on a nice little article in their local paper, community paper, about our presence, which also helps with parking. <laughs> because most of the locals have heard about our coming. So they're a little bit more forgiving of us <laughs> parking in their places where maybe we otherwise shouldn't be parking. I don't know. We try to avoid that. <laughs> All right, I, I'm happy to say I am liking, generally, I'm liking what's happening here. The placement, um, the drawing, the placement, the composition is um, almost non-existent so far. Um, composition, if you, if you watch me often, you know, I say this all the time, composition is almost a subset of values. Composition refers to the, the placement of the major light and dark zones of the painting. It doesn't refer primarily to even to what, what most people would call shapes, like, ooh, shape of a boat, or shape of a truck, or shape of a house. No, 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 abstract shapes. So you could say, oh, here's a, here's a, whatever, here's a shape, bump, 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 right? So that's the difference between the way artist uses the word and the way that a uh, not a non artist might use the word. Trans shapes, I call them. Shapes that go far beyond the sh shape of a boat, say. Anyway, so I'm, I'm generally, at the moment, I'm, I'm liking uh, the drawing. Composition is going to come, because I, I, there's not much light and dark. It's all just pastel, kind of flat. Pretty, but flat. Um, composition will come when I start doing the major light and dark stuff. That will, especially when I do the first oil glaze. But I'm miles from that right now. I forgot to look at my phone to see what time I started. Have lock, yes. Yes, Susan. There, um, there's we have two cottages um, this year. One cottage has four women, and the cottage I'm in has Mike and I, one woman, and my wife. It was supposed to be two women, but alas, one of them got coronavirus just a week and a half ago, so she got she got bumped off the trip. Um, we have some some family members, not me, but Mike has some some family members that are uh, at risk, so he can't take the risk of being close to hanging out with people um, that are high risk. So anyway, it was supposed to be two men and two women, M Mike and I and two women, <laughs> which has never happened, the ratios have never happened like that before. But because that obviously, <laughs> the optics of that are so bad. So that's the reason my wife is here for the first time, because again, this has been a no, no nonsense, no spouse kind of trip until this year with my wife being here. 
they've never been spouses even allowed to come. Now one time a husband came and he was bored out of his gourd, the poor guy. <laughs> he had nobody to play with. He just sat around and watched TV because his wife is painting and all the rest of us were painting. He was very nice about it, but anyway, so yeah, lots, lots of women, <laughs> lots of women. I'm not sure that's the right way to put that. It sounds weird. Hello, ladies. Hello. Oh, look at you barefoot. You people. I, that's why I said ow. I you just must, on you must be on vacation. No, I live in Mania. We don't wear shoes there. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> we're, we're just getting ready to go on a walk. For the okay. Dare County doesn't wear shoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which way am I looking? No, I, mean, I, I just, can't. Just look at what you're doing. Well, you're, you're, that's that bug. That's right. Wait. There we go. Just, yeah, it's there. People often get confused. They think an artist sets up his. This is the way it is in cartoons. All the cartoons you, or movies you ever saw. Yeah. You Easel. Do this way. Scene. Yeah, right, Wrong. That's right. cartoons and that's right. movies. <laughs> but you get the better light when you're doing like this. Well, I don't want. Look at if if what I'm painting is right in front of me. Are you gonna be too? I'd be flat? going. I'd be going like this all yeah. day. Now I <laughs> would get a workout. Right. My lats would be happy, yeah. but no, that'd be a pain. That is great. Thank you. So, do you own this, or are you renting this? No, we're renting it. Yeah, we're what renting. fun. It is, it fun. is a lots and lots of fun. We, I would love to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I'm weird. I'm just renters, too. There are seven of us around town this week painting. There's one right there. Yeah, yeah, I saw her when we came. And here. there's the, uh, another buddy down so there. where did you come from? Well, uh, uh, some uh, Raleigh, Wilmington, Jacksonville, blank, Wilson. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. From from all over. Yes. Oh, it's fun. So you're having a good, beautiful weather. Oh, isn't it amazing? I mean, you've got sun. You've also got. Yep. Yep. Uh, you've got perfect weather. Yep. So we've done. This is our seventh year. We come every year, second second weekend in October. And that canvas was blank when you started? Oh, yes. So you've done Certainly. that much just in that little yes. time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now I have miles to go. This is all just underpainting. Yeah. Yeah, go see, go, go see what else is happening. I'm not trying to get rid of you. I know. <laughs> go see, that's Peggy. Go, pe go pester Peggy. It sounded terrible, didn't it? <laughs> go look, go, tsh, don't see what somebody else is doing. Get out of here, would you? <laughs> Not at all what I meant, I promise. <laughs> As you can, I hope you can tell, I actually like people and actually like being watched. <laughs> uh, go pick on somebody else. <laughs> I moved this tree here, by the way, just for what it's worth, because I had a, a I had a coterminous problem. Coterminous, my life for ending in the same spot. I had a the 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 boat the tree was over here and the boat and the tree and it came right together at the, right at the wrong spot. So that was very unpleasant. So I fixed it early on. Nice to catch those things so you don't have to come back and do great big repair jobs later. That right there, with that was just an abstract, ab purely abstract mark, pur purely, <laughs> purely abstract mark. Railing, railing. I like. I do like this um, big bit of um, yellow light right here. Um, that's that's natural wood in reality down there. It's natural wood lattice. So uh, yeah, very bright with the sun on it. Very bright yellow orange color. And down here, some major shadows. This is and this is actually realistic. I know. Hang on. Let me point you guys at what the scene again, since I know. Um, several of you have joined since I showed you the scene. There we go. All right, do you see those shadows going across the road? Those will definitely be included in my painting. The bottom of my painting will have what I call a threshold. And this is the most, most common for me. Most of my paintings 
we the viewer are standing in the shade if you will so this will be dark and then light is out there that it, that's just one of course that's just one trick one approach to uh, a you know compositional issue uh, but it's certainly one of my favorite in in landscapes we're talking about um, that I do uh, what I call a threshold it's probably safe to say that all things being equal that's that's my uh, that's my go-to uh, solution for see that right there that line right there that's that's ocean okay so that's eye level all the way across that means all these vanishing points will converge at on that line somewhere Uh, I have a lot of wet paint on this canvas. Okay, tell you what, before I go, because I, I might have to take a little break. I might do two broadcasts here, um, which is not my preference. I like to just keep rolling, but um, if, if I have to have a break for, for stuff to dry, um, that, is, that is certainly what I'll do. Uh, I'll take a break. I almost forgot the, the dark part of this hall. It's a huge, huge element in this visual element in a boat is the, you know, the two-tone hall. I mean, that, that's, that's always on a boat, right? All right, let's change subjects a little bit. One, 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 thing that this painting as it is as it exists right now which of course is just just underpainting uh, but one principle if you will that that is very obvious uh, in this painting right now is is it's a good time for me to talk about the difference between a pitcher and again I always I, I'm mispronounced and you you people who are English is your second language the correct word is picture, P-I-C-T, picture, picture. Uh, and I intentionally butcher the word just because I'm nasty, <laughs> just to make life difficult. Um, and I mispronounce it picture, which is like a pitcher of water. Or you can spell it any way you want to. It's because I'm ridiculing the concept. Um, the difference between a picture and a painting. Now, the reason this is a good time to talk about it is because this is so clearly a picture. It's so clearly a picture of a boat and a truck and a house and a tree, but especially the boat, right? A boat is very picturesque. Here, I pronounced it the right way that time. A boat, the, the boat, any boat is very iconic, is very picturesque. Are you with me? So it's obviously a picture, picture again, mispronouncing it, or picture of a boat. And yet it should be, it should be ridiculously obvious to anyone who would look at my painting at this point to say well yeah it's a it's a boat but but why is it such a mess <laughs> right <laughs> fair question oh by the way hang on hang on I'm, i was going to fix this later but let's do it right now okay i do solemnly swear repeat after me all you artists if you're painting repeat, um repeat after me i do solemnly swear that I will never again paint a flat plane without a, without a diagonal going across it. Okay, so boom, right there. See, this side of the house is a flat plane, right? Are you with me? It's a flat plane. I do solemnly swear that I will never again paint a flat plane flat. It's another way to say said the same thing. I will never again paint a flat plane in a flat manner. I will always draw almost always a shadow it doesn't have to be a shadow it could be you know a plant or any number of other things but most of the time it's a shadow I will never again paint a flat plane an object that in nature in reality is a flat surface I'll never paint it flat I will always put almost always a diagonal shadow okay that's your default setting any deviation from the default is you, you got to have a good reason for, for defaulting from it, which there certainly can be reasons, but that's your default. All right. Now, does anybody else see a flat plane 
in this painting that does not. This one, this does, by the way. Here, let me re, re accentuate. And this is realistic, by the way. I'm, this is realistic in the, the shadow of the boat. That is the angle S. Ooh, not only that, another shadow has developed on this boat since I got here. And that one right there, and I like that too. That's even better. So we have a, two diagonals, one there and one there. But anybody see the truck? Yeah, so what's wrong with that truck as is? It's a flat plane and it's flat. Boo. Boo. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Alright. Trying to mix up a kind of a a little bit of a dirty blue. I don't have any I don't have a bottle of medium with me. Okay, so where, 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 where? How far back? I could put a shadow up here as if it's a shadow of the boat on the truck. Like but you know what? I think that's a good idea. Bingo! Whoa! That idea didn't come to me until, honestly, to right then when you saw me about to do it, said, wait a minute, I was going to do a shadow over here, and then I went, wait a minute. Now, this is not realistic, do you understand? There is no shadow of the boat on the truck, but you don't know that. There's not nobody viewing the, the, the painting would say, wait a minute. <laughs> they would say, wait a minute, that, that shadow's in the wrong place. Nope, nobody can discern that. Um, so bingo, all of a sudden that, that flat plane is interesting. And I have a little bit more to do. There's a, there's a rear view mirror on the side of the truck. This is actually getting more fun. How do you know when you got too many flat planes? I, I mean, too many diagonal shadows. I don't know, but it's hard to, hard to get too many. <laughs> With me? There. There we go. All right, I do. I see some some compositional elements finally starting to surface now. Where where are my major light and dark zones going to go? And one of them is all of this back here is going to be dark, dark tree. So, so right now, that's that's my composition is light. It's like a horseshoe shape we'll see that we have miles to go so I'm not sure that will continue but it might let's do the dark in this foreground even just a little bit more with some purple or violet if you prefer <laughs> if you want to sound a little more artsy don't call it purple call it violet okay I don't want you to be embarrassed in front of your artsy friends so if you want to be artsy, call it violet. Violet, violet, my dear. I use violet. <laughs> well, I'm just from the country, and I use purple. <laughs> I think there, I think there technically is a difference between violet and purple, and I think the answer is that purple is has more red in it, and violet is is less red or more blue in it. But even that may be wrong. All right, I think I'm going to do. One more hit of uh, white details. I, I love doing this white stuff in the in the acrylic phase. It's just always just adding this light. It's so much fun. Um, it's it's very uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for tangible, feelable. Um, the human eye likes to see light paint on top of dark paint. Maybe that's why that's so much fun. I don't know. I can't even promise. I can't even guarantee that say that's why but I just know that I just like it it's so much fun doing these little and this layer of white of course is is finer more detailed smaller marks more accurate than the than the earlier uh, layers of white right make sense 
by the way, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to stop and take another picture of this scene because uh, it's changed a lot. And and for no, not for the paint, th not for this painting, but when the day comes that I want to do perhaps possibly another painting of the same view. The light that I'm seeing right now is quite fetching. There we go. Okay, that's done. See, but you don't chase the light. You don't you don't say, oh, that looks better, and and then change your direction. Right? That leads to visual chaos. If you if you chase, don't let the sun mess with you. Stick stick by your original decision. Otherwise, you, you paint chaos, and it just doesn't work well at all. Okay, so I will take a little break in just a minute. As soon as I finish this last layer of white, because uh, it'll take me a few minutes to switch out all my equipment stuff from um, from acrylic to oil All right and then I should go check on my friends and make sure that because I I drove here we're only we're only about a mile from our cottage but that's a little bit far to ask them to walk <laughs> so I want to make sure that they're not dying to go home and just because I want to paint for two hours <laughs> doesn't mean that they do so I should check on them see how they're doing and if that's the case then of course I will take my uh, my phone my camera with me back to the house and paint the rest of the painting from the floor I have a hunch that that's gonna be and that doesn't really matter that much because a as you can see the light has already uh, changed so much that the I can look down you know the subject is to my left I can look down there for for like architectural architectural details, um, but I'm really not looking down there for lighting any much anymore. A little bit, but not much, because again, I can't I can't allow myself to be too too influenced by what's down there because it's changed enough. So, doing the rest. By the way, sometimes yes, I'll do like uh, Monet did, I, and I could stop this right here. And then come back uh, tomorrow afternoon. Set up my easel in exactly the same spot. Okay, that's what that is exactly what Monet did, the father of plein air painting, by the way. And a little while ago, I was talking about how I, I'm an unusual plein air painter in that I do large and you know fully developed paintings out uh, in the field, whereas most plein air paintings do painters do quick studies and then often finish them or redo them back in their studio. Um, so I'm the oddball here, but let me hasten to point out, but I am doing what the father of plein air painting, who is Claude Monet, uh, I am doing what he did. So I'm the oddball, but not in, in the broad sweep of history. I'm, I'm doing what the original plein air painter did finished paintings out in the field doesn't matter either one I'm, it's not I'm not saying I'm better or worse I'm just saying that is that is the history yeah so there we go let's see anybody else talking yeah <laughs> yeah flat truck boo <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just because I'm not done the back wheel, David. That's the wheel. That red, that white thing is just the hubcap. And um, I don't think it's too short. It's a, it's a short bed long cab same as my son-in-law has back home all right 
uh, Susan, have you ever done tree holes where some of the holes were the color of the light yellow patches of the tree? Yes, certainly, correct. Yes, yes, yes. You're always thinking about what, what is it that's behind the tree, and whatever it is, that's the color that it is. I think I'm understanding your question there, Susan. Yes, so like if they're light yellow leaves, say, pale green or sh chartreuse, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I am going, let me, let me do a sign out here, just in case any of you need to leave us. <laughs> Whoa, there. Hey, while I'm, while I'm doing that, I'll show you around, okay? Hang on just a second. Let me just show you where I am, just for fun. I keep showing you down that way. Here's right, right behind me is a beautiful, beautiful new house being built and a beautiful small house. There's old, big old live oak trees, winding, narrow streets. Uh, some of these houses are go back, a lot of them do, uh, 100 years. Um, I don't know what the oldest houses are on the island. Maybe, you know. Evidently, they had one of the worst hurricanes. I mean, I know they had a hurricane two years ago. Two years ago, we couldn't come to Ocracoke because of the hurricane. But somebody told us a little while ago it was the worst one in the history of Ocracoke. It's pretty amazing because it's been, you know, it's been an English settlement for over 200 years. Anyway. Yeah, that's good so far. I like it. Thanks for your company. And um, I'll broadcast again either very soon from this location or in a while from back at the cottage. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.